so many bands on and the, it's fairly heavy metal orientated this hard rock hell um, we weren't quite sure whether we'd be too sort of I don't know classic rock or blues rock for everybody but no we got a great reaction you know not just for the white snake songs that we do about a quarter or a third of the set is old white snake stuff that myself and Mickey Moody were associated with but our own original material seemed to get good reaction I, was say, I think people have a soft spot for the band because of the the, the backgrounds of all the members for, yeah. for, for all the bands you've been in everyone kind of looks at us oh gosh I used to like them so that, that really works in the favour yeah definitely I mean it works against us in that everybody's very busy doing other things I mean Harry's in Magnum and Thunder and probably a couple of other bands. In fact, I know he is in a couple of other bands. Myself and Laurie, our day job is in the Queen musical in London. Mickey does other things um, of various descriptions. I think the only one who doesn't do as much, particularly live, is Chris Uzi, the singer. But he's well in demand for session stuff and... He's got a great, I mean, a great voice. I saw oh, you guys yeah. live at Steelhouse Festival as well, oh, yeah. and um, just a, it's a very kind of Paul Rogers-esque voice. Yeah. It, it, it's a classic, sort of great voice. Isn't it? Yeah, we were very lucky to find him uh, because we started off as just being a kind of white snake tribute in a sense. It's the wrong word, but we were just going out and to start off with just doing white snake songs. So we did need somebody in that vein, and that's the kind of voice I like. Of course, Mr. Coverdale's very, very difficult act to follow. Um, but yeah, we were so lucky to find Chris, and he's developing as we go along. He had a lot to do with the writing of the album, and he will have more input on the next one, obviously. Oh, well, that's a good, good to hear this being next one. Because I was going to say, having gone from that kind of doing just the covers, the original material is, is amazing, and, and you must be so pleased with how well the album's gone down. Yeah, very pleased, um, and the record company is pleased enough that they've offered for us to do a follow-up, but it won't be out uh, till the year after next, because they've got such a full schedule. So we're going to take our time with the writing and recording anyway. Um, but when we got together, there was no way of knowing <coughs> excuse me, that you know we were going to be able to come up with material um, and even then it has to fit in kind of with the style of the band so in certain cases we tried a few different things when we were writing for the first album which you know somebody might do a backing track and then Chris would not be inspired by it so that gets left by the wayside so you try different things and see what works and we get together in rehearsal and work on very rough ideas and add our own thing to it and just take it somewhere else, really. It, it starts becoming a Snake Charmer song instead of a Mickey Moody song or a Laurie Wisefield song.